Welcome to Accounting 101 Lesson 9, where we're going to look at the financial statements. We're going to continue looking at them. Lesson 8 was all about the income statement. Lesson 9 is all about the statement of financial position, otherwise known as a balance sheet. So the accounting equation then, just a reminder about that, if you can still remember it from the previous videos, it's assets minus liabilities equals capital. So assets, things that have a debit balance, things that are owned by the business or amounts of money that are owed to the business. Liabilities are your amounts that are owed by the business. Um, and then the capital is the amount that the owner has invested in the business. And capital will increase by any profit that the business makes, or it will be reduced by any loss that the business makes. And drawings will also reduce the owner's capital. So we'll come back to that in a minute, but this equation forms the basis of our statement of financial position. Okay, so in terms of where everything goes then, the income statement, if you remember, deals with income and expenditure. So income is amounts of money that are earned by the business. So sales revenue would be the biggest example, but anything else that says received past tense after it um, is a type of income. So other income would include things like rent received, interest received, commission received, discounts received. Expenditure is anything spent on day-to-day -day running costs of the business. And the income statement shows how much the business is earning, first of all, from its trading activities, its gross profit. And then overall, once it's had its uh, overheads deducted, it gives us the profit for the year. So the equation for the income statement, income minus expenses is profit. And a reminder that profit is not the amount of money the business makes because profit and cash are not the same thing at all. And we'll look at that in later episodes but the, uh, the profit is the surplus of income over expenditure. And obviously if we have more expenditure than we have income, the business has made a loss. Now, when we're doing the financial statements, it's important that we complete the income statement first because the profit for the year is gonna be transferred onto the statement of financial position. It's gonna be added to the owner's capital that was there at the start of the year. Um, if the business has made a loss, then that will be deducted from the owner's capital. Okay. So a little reminder there about the income statement. This is the income statement we looked at in the in the last episode in, in lesson eight. Um, and this is the income statement for Wyvern wholesalers. And if you remember, the income statement is for the whole year. It's for the year ended 31st of December, in this case, perhaps 2021. Um, so this is the um, trading section up here down as far as gross profit, how much we've made in sales, the cost of those sales. Um, and then we deduct the cost of sales from the net sales figure to come up with the gross profit. Now this um, approach actually uses three columns. If you look at my lesson number eight, you'll see that uh, I prefer a two column approach. I think it's neater. I think this third column is wholly unnecessary. Um, but then once we've got the gross profit, we're adding on the, the discount received, taking off the expenses, and we've got a profit for the year of 42,850. So let's try and remember that figure, 42,850, while we go about sorting out the statement of financial position. So the statement of financial position, otherwise known as the balance sheet, is not for the year ended. It gives a snapshot of the value of the business at a particular date. And that would usually be drawn up at the end of the year. So whereas the income statement encompasses transactions for the whole year, so we say it's for the year ended, when we do the statement of financial position, it's as at a particular date. So it shows the value of the assets, the liabilities, and the owner's capital at that given date, which could all change the following day. So if you think about things like bank balance, trade receivables, inventory, they're constantly changing. So um, the statement of financial position says what the situation was at that date, um, whereas the income statement, it gives us all the information for the entire year. Okay, so this is a statement of financial position. Um, this one is for a business called Wyvern Wholesalers. Um, so this is carrying on from the income statement. If we just have a little look down at the bottom here where it's uh, got the finance by section, we can see that the profit for the year has been added in there. So essentially what we're looking for on the statement of financial position is the assets and the liabilities. The assets are going to be split into two categories. Non-current assets are things that are going to be there for more than one year, whereas current assets will be turned into cash generally within 12 months or maybe already are cash. We can do the same with liabilities. So current liabilities are amounts that are owed by the business that will be due for payment within one year. Um, and non-current liabilities are amounts owed that are gonna be paid for in more than one year. So trade payables, if you think about those, they're, they're the amounts that we owe to suppliers. We're definitely gonna to have to pay those 
within a year, otherwise we won't get any more supplies. And a bank overdraft would be included as a current liability. If we've got money in the bank, it's a current asset, or if we've got cash, as we have here. But a bank overdraft is only ever negotiated for a period of 12 months at a time. It has to be renewed each year with the bank. So every year we've got to go back to the bank and see if they're happy to extend the overdraft facility. So that's why bank overdrafts are always treated as a current liability. Okay, so we have got three columns in this particular um, statement of financial position. And when we get on a little bit in our studies, we'll be doing something called depreciation on these non-current assets. So we will um, make use of the other two columns. But for now, we just want to put the property and the equipment. So these are non-current assets, things that are going to be around for more than a year. We put those in the top right hand corner of the statement of financial position. Okay, and in the middle column, we're going to start on current assets. So this area here in the middle, current assets minus current liabilities, is going to bring us down to a figure called net current assets, which is otherwise known as working capital. And that's the difference between our current assets, in this case, 40,275, and our current liabilities, 12,892. So this business has a positive figure there, net current assets are 27. 1,383. So that means we've got more in current assets. And if you remember, those are things that are likely to be turned into cash within 12 months. Then we've got current liabilities. So current liabilities are lower than current assets, which is a good situation to be in. So current assets, any of these assets, in fact, we state in the order of their least liquidity. So the ones that are furthest away from being cash are listed first. So obviously, non-current assets are unlikely to be sold anytime soon. So they go in at the top there. Current assets, we start with inventory. This is the closing inventory. So it's the figure at the end of the year. If we went back to the previous slide, um, or previous couple of slides, we can see that the closing inventory there is the bottom figure in cost of sale. So closing inventory, don't get it mixed up with opening inventory, needs to be put in there. And that's the furthest away from becoming cash because it's got to be converted into trade receivables, amounts owed by our customers, and then they'll pay us and hopefully that will be money in the bank or cash. So closing inventory goes in there, trade receivables next, and then bank and cash balances are in after that. Now we've got no bank balance under current assets in this example, because that's been included in current liabilities. It's a bank overdraft. So don't go trying to put the bank in here under all circumstances. We don't want any brackets, um, in negative bank balances in there. It's only positive assets that we want to include. So moving on to current liabilities then, these are amounts that we're going to be paying within a year. So trade payables, these are suppliers to whom we owe money for purchases, for goods that we've bought from them. So this business owes 12,041 and it also has a small bank overdraft, 851. So the total of its current liabilities, 12,892, is then deducted from the total current assets, 4,275, to give us this net current assets figure. Okay, so that's the difference between assets and liabilities, the current ones. If liabilities, current liabilities are higher than current assets, we'd have a negative figure there and we would call it net current liabilities. But assuming that it is net current assets, we then have to add those to the 130,000 in non-current assets um, and we subtotal it. Now that doesn't get a label at this stage because we've got to take off non-current liabilities, so amounts that are due for payment after more than one year. In this case, we've got a loan of 11,500. So we then deduct from the 157383, we deduct the 11,500 loan, and that leaves us with net assets of 145883. So what we've completed in this top section of the statement of financial position is the first part of the equation. We've taken our assets and we've minused our liabilities to get net assets. And then in the bottom section, we prove how those assets have been financed. So we say they're financed by capital. So this is the owner's capital account. Um, so we start with opening capital. That's the amount that the owner had invested in the business at the start of the year, which in this case was 113475. We add the profit for the year to that, in this case 40, 42,850. We can subtotal that, but it's not entirely necessary. We then need to take off the drawings. So drawings are goods and money that the owner has taken out of the business for his or her own use. So we deduct that from the capital um, and get an overall figure. So the, the value of capital at the end of the year, the amount that the business owes to its owner is 145883. And you should be able to see here, the reason why it used to be called a balance sheet is that those two numbers are the same, it balances. So overall net assets is a debit 
and um, capital obviously is a credit, it's a type of liability really, it's the amount of money the business owes to the owner. So hopefully that's given you an idea of, of how the, uh, the layout works, how the maths will work. Um, what you now need to do is practice. You need to get your hands on some figures and start practicing some financial statements. Remember your presentation. If you're not very neat, then draw up columns with a ruler. Um, plan your answer. So when you're given a trial balance, have a think through where the figures will go. Are they income statement figures? So we're looking for income and expenses to go on there. Or are they assets, liabilities and capital in which case they'll go on the statement of financial position. There's nothing more annoying than getting to the end of the um, statement of financial position and realizing you forgot to include sales returns right at the beginning of the income statement because that will just mess up all the figures all the way through and we don't want that. Um, and then layout, follow the prescribed layout. There are no prizes in accounting for being creative. So I hope that's uh, been some help to you. Thanks very much for watching.